Today, on the first ever Security Breach special episode of FNAF Unsolved, we investigate the hidden truths of the covered past events of the Mega Pizzaplex, and we explore the depths of the establishment, attempting to answer the question, where is Glamrock Bonnie? This episode is sponsored by the subscribe button. With a click of just one button, you can gain access to a huge variety of FNAF related videos as soon as I upload them. And it's all for absolutely nothing. Subscribe today and you won't be disappointed. In the 21st century, Fazbear Entertainment's mission was to cover the bad representation of Freddy's from the 1980s, starting with a Fazbear's Fright and moving on to a virtual reality game and a delivery service. And when the limelight was back on Freddy Fazbear, they built the Mega Pizzaplex, a huge exciting establishment for all ages, those who play in the daycare to the parents who grew up with Freddy and his friends. On the main stage were the four star animatronics, Glamrock Freddy, Chica, Bonnie and Roxanne Wolf. However, in the present day, Bonnie is nowhere to be seen. His place on stage has been taken by an old support animatronic, Montgomery Gator. What's strange is that the Bonnie Bowl is one of the only remnants of Bonnie's existence. Inside is a closed curtain and Bonnie is nowhere to be seen. People seem to remember the star animatronic from their pasts. The animatronics seem to know of the character and members of staff are unaware of what happened to him. So, what really happened to Glamrock Bonnie? And where is he now? He probably went on vacation with his family or something. I heard they live underwater. I forgot what they were called. Ocean Bonnies, River Bonnies, Pond Bonnies, Glacier Bonnies. I'm glad that he could make the decision, after all. He's always been the number two. At least, that's what I think every time I see Bonnies. <gasps> sea Bonnies! Animatronic logs show the location of each animatronic from Rockstar Row, and luckily, Bonnie's was recorded on the night of his disappearance. At 12.24am, Bonnie was found leaving his green room and heading east towards the Pizzaplex atrium. Over two hours later, at 2.40am, Bonnie entered the East Arcade. One and a half hours later, at 4.12am, Bonnie was last seen entering Monty Golf. For some unknown reason, Bonnie over the span of four hours made his way from his green room to Monty Golf, and nobody witnessed him exit the area. Although, experts say there are signs that Fazbear Entertainment knows exactly what happened, and they are trying to once again cover up their mistakes. But no matter how hard they try to scrape the paint off the wall at Bonnie Bowl, and no matter how easily they replace the bass player of the Glamrock band, Parents and their children will still remember the presence of Bonnie, and currently, the company have not explained the choice they have made in replacing him with Monty. Fazbear Entertainment are sounding super suspicious once again. Maybe they just got rid of him because of the old rumours that Afton used a Bonnie suit to murder his victims. But does that really sound like Fazbear Entertainment? The real question I have is that Afton is out of the company, Henry died in his fire, who the heck is running this company? And why are they doing such a bad job? They made a mall with even more missing children's incidents and the creepiest DJ you could imagine. Is anyone actually in charge of the company or are they just having bad luck? It's still unknown what happened to Glamrock Bonnie and his disappearance is unexplained. So let's get into the theories of where the robot went and why it happened. Starting off with the first theory, Montgomery Gator is the culprit and planned for his own increase in popularity by getting rid of a main stage performer. This theory sounds like a truth. Firstly, it doesn't sound outlandish, knowing that the last location Bonnie was seen in was Monty's area. Additionally, Monty didn't always have his claws. They were handed down to him so that he could play the bass, much like how Bonnie probably had his own claws to play. The Monty Golf area has many hazardous areas, including a high walkway that Monty himself has slipped on in the past. But how would Monty plan an elaborate scheme, and what would be his motivation? Maybe he had to do it for his family of sea Monties. Now is that spelt with a Y-S or an I-E-S? 
The technology of the animatronics in the Pizzaplex seem a lot more advanced than those of the previous locations. They have personality chips which give each of them their main attributes, and it makes them feel more human-like. They each have emotions, and that includes jealousy. Monty's personality seems to be more apparent than others. He wants to be the face of Freddy's and the real star of the show. He wants to throw Freddy in a dumpster and take the main stage with his own backup animatronics. And because of that, he decided he needed to start getting rid of animatronics. The theory is that he kicked Bonnie out so that he could get on the stage and that Bonnie is now completely decommissioned, and Fazbear Entertainment are trying to hide it. They may not even have access to Bonnie's body, which begs the question, where is it, and what could it be being utilised for? A few things seem to not completely add up in this theory. Why did Bonnie even go to Monty Ulf in the first place? I am honestly fully convinced that Bonnie was just done with his career of being a rock star, and knowing that his cousin Spring Bonnie became a killer, and another Bonnie became an augmented reality rock, after 50 years, he just needed a break. He needed some alone time on the golf course and some family time in the ocean. I truly hope this is canon. That brings us to theory number two, perhaps the most chilling theory, that Bonnie's parts were used for something else and his stroll into their golf course wasn't accidental. Could somebody have lured Bonnie into the area, and if so, then who? Monty, as the main culprit, definitely has the motivation to do such a thing, but the only use he would get out of it is a claw upgrade. Instead, theorists believe something more sinister. William Afton, co-founder of Fazbear Entertainment and murderer of the original Missing Children, is still thriving as a devastating computer virus named Glitchtrap, infecting and mind-controlling robots and humans. His original human body has been burnt to the stake at least twice now, and not much at all remains. However, detectives have discovered a drain in power source under Roxy's raceway in the Pizzaplex, and they have traced it back to the threat of Afton. This theory implies that William Afton is forming a new body for himself under the Pizzaplex, with the help of drained Pizzaplex power and the destroyed parts of Glamrock Bonnie. Supporting this theory, it is possible that he used Glitchtrap's consciousness to lead Bonnie using Monty, or to simply lead Bonnie under his control. Bonnie, much like Monty now, seems to have been the most dangerous with claws that can scrape through walls hence Afton's choice of Glamrock Bonnie in his new body. But also, I'm sure Afton had to keep up with his trend of becoming rabbits. If I had to pick any of the animatronics to become though, I'd just have to choose DJ Music Man. Imagine being able to crawl around and intimidate everyone around you, as well as spin some dope tracks on the dance floor. That truly would be the life. The final theory is mostly speculation. If Glamrock Bonnie once existed, and was torn apart and decommissioned at some point. Could that mean there was once a Glamrock Foxy? In the Pizzaplex, there is a kid's cove area with no animatronic, and Roxanne Wolf seems to be quite narcissistic, yet passionate about living up to the band's history. Could Glamrock Foxy have existed and been replaced by the star of Roxy Raceway? It's possible Monty was responsible again, but it didn't bring him to the stage. But finally, there also could have been a mangle of some sorts, as Pizzaplex explorers have discovered some old mangle rooms on the underground floor of the establishment. I guess we'll never find out, but all we know is that Afton is coming back, and there seems to be some deeper unsolved mysteries in the Mega Pizzaplex. This really is a strange mystery, so tell me what theories you all believe in the comments, and let us know if there's any unsolved FNAF mysteries you'd like us to cover. With that being said, make sure you check out the subscribe button and clear out all of the viruses on your computer. I heard there's a new effective software called Princess Antivirus, but we're not being sponsored by them today. With a guilty gator, rabbit hater, the possible future return of the infamous child murderer, and a story of a company that cannot cover up their past, this mystery is left unsolved.